Justin, in trying to discern whether God exists, you have to look at religion because that's the expression, supposedly, of how God is dealing in the world of human beings. But it is quite uh, evident, in, especially in recent times, that there are very naturalistic expressions of how religion can come about without any need of God. In fact, you've been a pioneer in, uh, in the cognitive science of, of understanding religion. So l- let me understand how religion can come about. Assuming there was no God, wouldn't it be the case that we would expect religion to occur anyway? We certainly have accounts of how religions might come about without making any direct appeal to the existence of gods. And there are various versions of these accounts, but uh, one might go as follows. Because of the way that human minds naturally work, um, from early childhood, the way we develop makes us really interested in and excited about explaining the world around us in terms of minded beings, in terms of some ones around us who are um, acting, who have beliefs and desires and act to bring about their desires to satisfy those. Um, That would have been a normal part of our social interactions from way back in our evolutionary history. Certainly it's the case from the word go when babies come out of the womb. They're Mm -hmm. looking for the people. There's evidence that babies, newborns, are selectively attending to face-like things and can even imitate facial expressions. Mm -hmm. People uh, and and other kinds of objects that act on their own seem to be particularly important to babies. Um, And all of us, right? I mean, Mm -hmm. we're we're social beings. Um, Well, and if if that's right, sure looks like it is, um, we can extend that too. We can extend that to thinking about um, the intentions behind the natural world. Um, the, the beings out there who might account for perceived order and purpose that other research has shown that babies have. And because that order and purpose out there in the natural world, um, the rhythms of life cycles, um, the remarkable beauty that we see, um, seems to cry out for an explanation, um, and regular mechanistic explanations don't do the job. A someone seems to be the right exp- so explanation. So I hear you talking about two separate ideas that come together. One is the search for agents, yeah. will beings of any kind, and the other is a search for purpose, for end results, teleology, as we say, looking for why things happen with a, with a reason. And these are two separate items that you say you see both in babies, a, 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 a desire, for, um, uh, for a- to see agents and a desire to see purpose. So if you bring them together, that's a very powerful combination. That's right. And we also see that children three years old, say, also have an, a tendency to attribute super properties to minded beings, to agents, including their mother. Mm. Um, uh, that they have sort of super knowledge, and super perception. Um, My daughter, when she was about three or four years old, drew a picture of her mother with one eye, and she said she only needed one eye to see everything I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> Mothers are great at pulling off this sort of omniscience kind of act. Actually, my, my children are teenagers now, and they're still sure that mom knows everything that they do. Um, they're probably right. <laughs> But yeah, it, that disposition to attribute super knowledge and super power and maybe even immortality seems mm. to be there from, the, from very early on um, and can be a little hard to shake sometimes. Well, that makes it very easy to adopt belief in super knowing and super perceiving gods as well. Um, so if you put together all of these little factors, maybe there's a lot of natural encouragement to at least f- entertain the idea of gods. And then some of my evolutionary studies friends will come along and say, yeah, and once you've got gods in your community, they're good at um, solving uh, cooperation problems. They maybe make it harder for people to cheat on each other because they're afraid that the gods will catch them even if the people don't and might punish them. And maybe that makes us more cooperative. And maybe then those cooperative communities 
are more successful than the, those that don't believe in God. So the gods came about through these mechanisms of an individual, even at very young ages, looking for agents, looking for a purpose, all-knowing. And then when they emerge, they get reinforced by the community. It sure looks like that could be the way it goes. That's right. So that looks like a very nice, complete system that religion can develop without any reference to whether there's a God That's or not. That's right. In, in, in this kind of explanation, we haven't put any cards on the table of whether or not the gods are real. Um, so it looks like we've got this full explanation. Um, now I'm, I'm hedging a little bit here. I say it looks like because the naturalistic uh, assumptions that we started with, of course, precluded bringing the gods in anyway. Right. So occasionally I do hear this kind of response. Well, maybe that part of the mind that's sort of busy finding agents out there, intentional beings, minds, is so permissive because there really are spirits. And if it wasn't good at detecting them, it would be trouble. I've heard this kind of explanation. Um, maybe, or here's another version, maybe not quite as exotic, maybe it's the case that all of our cognitive capacities have been sort of divinely appointed. Yeah, they've evolved, mm -hmm, yeah. but because God selected this world and this evolutionary process to bring about beings like us, so that they would have a receptivity to the divine. Just because you guys didn't bring God in doesn't mean God wasn't part of the background factors that you accidentally have brought in, even though you weren't aware of it. Sort of they're tacitly in the background. It's mm -hmm. part of the furniture mm -hmm. or the stage for this kind of explanation. And they would go further than that. They would say, if there's a God, then that would be the only way that God would create beings that would have a relationship with him. I mean, so, so it becomes right. a self-consistent system. That's right, that's right. Uh, and, and I don't think there's anything that science can do uh, to adjudicate between the two, but it can say that religion can be fully explained, fully explained, without need to, uh, to refer to the reality of that God behind it. Well, uh, fully explained, I don't know if so science ever fully term. explains anything, yeah. but within a certain kind of space, it can do a darn good job at <laughs> least. And I'll tell you, that's one of the fun things about working in this area, is even, people can come to this, whether they're religious or they're not religious, and we can do a, a whole lot of good work on the science and work together and have great agreement on that. Do the religious people get mad at you, though? I'm sure some. I do. seem to manage to make everybody a little bit mad at me. Well, what do what uh, what do your religious friends say that uh, <laughs> that show that they're not happy with what you've done? Well, um, well, of course, some religious people are uncomfortable with bringing evolution in at all. Okay. Um, even those that might be comfortable with evolution might feel a little bit uncomfortable, at least, with the idea that you're using evolution to explain why people have tendencies to believe in God. That sure seems like um, there's something sinister going on there. But that's not going to deter you. No, no. Um, I, don't, I don't see an inconsistency between full-bodied religious beliefs and doing this kind of science. Um, at least certain religious beliefs that are, are happy with the way that science works. And I am. I'm happy with it. Um, and besides, you know, uh, whenever you are pushing the bounds in any area, well, yeah, yeah, upset people on both sides. And uh, for every person who grouses at me a little bit, religious person, I have probably three or four others who say, oh, yeah, well, actually, you say children have a natural receptivity to God. Uh, well, that's, that's what the prophet taught as well. Mm -hmm. Or, well, that's what uh, St. Paul taught. Or uh, that's what we Hindus have said anyway. <laughs> so.